Hi, my name is Christy Carrolls, and I'm a solutions engineer with McAfee. Today we'll be discussing Envision Cloud and how it's a leading CASB that allows customers to adopt cloud services while addressing security, compliance, and governance requirements. Cloud is quickly becoming the norm, and recent research shows that the average enterprise uses over 2,000 cloud services, but IT only has visibility into less than 10% of these services. Understanding this gap and how it can be bridged by using Envision's Cloud Shadow IT product will introduce us into our first use case of how we can understand the cloud usage within our environment and then assess compliance and risk exposure. We're currently viewing the Envision Cloud Dashboard. Um, this is a great place because it's an overview of the most important metrics within what we're seeing in our cloud environment. And we can have a visualization of new services that are used in a specific period of time. We also have similar cards for things such as high risk services. Um, an interesting one here is users with uploads greater than 10 gig. We can absolutely click on any of these cards and delve deeper into the metrics that are being provided. So this one is users with uploads greater than 10 gigs. So we can see here's Bill Matson at the top. Uh, he's been using about 165 services and he's uploaded a lot, uh, upwards of 71 gig. I can go ahead and click on this and it gives me even uh, more information as to who Bill is, where he is, and then what types of services he's using. So he's in the finance department um, and that might be part of his job, right? He has a, a ton of data to uh, upload and share with others. We can see that over the last seven days, uh, the service he's used have been low risk and it has only um, uh, had a level of one, so it's very low and it was 74 gigs that were allowed. But it's good to see the volume of data and it can give us metrics over time and we could always watch Bill if we needed to and we think he's doing something risky. That being said, let's go ahead and go back to our dashboard. And we want, what we wanna look into is our high risk services. This is something uh, that we wanna delve into and a good place to start when we start looking at our environment. And right here we're looking at um, the last seven days. Let's say we wanna expand this to the last month We'll say the last month and we'll apply this. And we don't really want to look at that just high risk services. So we can actually remove this filter and add our own in. So we can call it uh, risk, high risk, sorry, type. Uh, we want to specifically look at cloud storage as my service category. And we're concerned about uh, the data encryption at rest. So we can type in encryption. Oops, if I typed it correctly. And we wanna look into those who have no data encryption at rest. So this possibly could be a potential for um, services with high data leakage possibilities because they're not even encrypted our data at rest. Um, we can see that if we look by upload, that master disk as well as Wikisend and Solidifiles are kind of on the top of the list. Um, and then it kind of goes down a little bit less. But the interesting part is it shows the users and under master disk, we have one user who's uploaded 540 meg and we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's say we're not so concerned about encryption and we're more concerned about multi-tenancy. And someone who doesn't support multi-tenancy. And the reason why we're concerned about that is uh, this could possibly be a key to uh, possible data loss or data leakage to another uh, organizations because of the fact that they don't separate or isolate our data from others. And we'll see that Wikisend uh, is one that has a ton of uh, uploads to it. So 180 meg, eight users are actually attached to it and it's providing a lot of uh, um, risky behaviors and risky um, types behind it. So another view that we can look at is we can look at a, a graph view to give us information about the level of volume and the data that's being uploaded. And then we can even look at the number of users. And this is what the great thing about Envision Cloud is that it allows us delve into really what we'd like to see. And we can start looking through um, the different areas of what users are doing, which is really great to see. From here, if we like this view, we're actually able to create a report and run this report on a scheduled basis. Uh, so we can always get this and track it regularly. So I'll call it Christie's report, risky report. 
Uh, I can look at the filters if I want to name it a little bit more appropriately, but here's my filters. I can send this as a business report, as a PDF, and then let's go ahead and set my frequency. So I want to do this weekly. I think this is important to see. And then from here I can schedule this. So now I've just scheduled this report. It's sent me one to my inbox. And it shows me, though, that uh, Zippy Share actually has 11 users that have attached to this um, cloud storage. So last but not least, let's go back to our view. Let's say we want to look at this view later. We can actually bookmark this page and save this filter for later use. So we can actually click in the star in the top right hand corner and we can save it as a new card um, and we can call it uh, risky cloud storage, no multi-tenancy. And let's say CJK it's for me. Um, and then I can save it. I can also add it as a dashboard card. This is kind of cool because it creates it right on my dashboard so I can say save. And that's what my dashboard card will look like. It's for services uh, and the allowed denied is what my metric will be on. And we'll go ahead and save. All right. The nice thing is if we go back to our dashboard, here's our risky cloud storage, no multi-tenancy. And if I want to see this view again, I can just go ahead and click on my card and it will automatically bring up my filters and provide me the information that I was looking for so I can quickly view uh, these risky cloud storages within my environment. Now we're going to look at our risky services and we're going to align the risk value um, with the company's risk appetite. So we can actually change these values. So the nice thing is if we click on one of these services, it provides us more information around um, the service, pros and cons of why it's risky uh, or not, right? So right now pros, uh, IP ownership, um, the customer owns it, so it's not like some random thing. Um, and there's been no breaches identified for this service, which is great. Um, but it allows anonymous use, which may not be good. We definitely are looking for things such as multi-factor authentication, which makes sure we know the user who's actually selecting. Um, and then we can see that they only have one location right here out of uh, Florida, it looks like. So they're out of WZ Communications out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We can also look at the risk of this, and this is how it starts scoring um, the risk value. So we're looking at data right here and each category and attribute has a risk score assigned to it and then the score is weighted to come up with a, a full score. So we can expand this and we can look a little bit more about this. So does the service offer a file sharing method as part of its service? It does, um, but we think it's risky because um, the way the data sharing is working doesn't meet with our risk uh, appetite, right? So that's one of the ways. And then here's one, data encryption at rest some information about data encryption at rest. We can also look at users and devices that are attached. So um, here's some users, they allow anonymous access. Yes, that's the value. We can look at the service itself, the different development practices. So they don't, they don't run penetration testing um, for the service. So no, they do not, which is uh, probably not good. So we don't know if they're being hacked and our data is being leaked. Um, and then also some business uh, compliancy, and this could be a big deal uh, specifically for some of our European customers from a regulatory compliance aspect. Um, so for things like GDPR, if we drop this down, we can see that they uh, are at high risk for GDPR uh, requirements. Now let's say that 70% is not what we're looking at and this is not the number. We want to make this definitely very risky and we want to be able to block from uh, this perspective because of the GDPR risk. We're actually able to take action directly from here to change um, the risk scoring. So we can override the service risk store by doing this um, and, and adding or changing it. Uh, but we can also delve into a little bit deeper by going into the global risk weighting. And here we can change the risk of a single attribute. So for instance, when we're talking about business risk with GDPR, um, we can absolutely say, you know what, this is really important because right now it's said as not important for us. We can absolutely say this is very important to us and it's 67% weighted and you'll notice how everything else changes from a slider perspective to work with the weight that we've added to that attribute. We can also pin a value by double clicking on it and what that does is if I change another 
type of attribute, that one's going to still stay as, uh, as heavily weighted as I initially uh, set it up from before. So uh, it's kind of cool how we can go through this process and weight it specifically uh, for the customers we're working with. And this is definitely one of our uh, differentiators as we provide our customers the ability to weight the uh, risk of these different services specific to their organization. I'm actually not going to save this right now. So I'm going to go back to my service details. And we'll be looking back at our service details when we were just looking at the risk. Um, and as you just saw, we were able to modify our risk scoring based on our customers' needs. Uh, next, we have usage. So we're able to look at the usage tab. And this is where we can delve deeper into uh, the top users using specific services. So we'll see that Ike Tanaka uh, is using um, this risky service, Wikisend, and how much data he's actually uploaded. We can see the different countries and then also the different departments who are utilizing uh, the traffic from here. So um, it can be specifically broken down. We can say, well, consulting, that probably makes a lot of sense because the data that needs to go to the cloud um, is based on sharing and the other customers using Wikisend. Uh, but finance, they probably shouldn't be sending things up into the cloud into a unencrypted, non-multi-tenancy um, supporting cloud storage service, right? So some things like that is, is good to see. Next, we can go ahead and look at the traffic and we can see how much data was allowed um, and different requests that were set up and then the specific URLs uh, for our environment. Um, and the nice thing about this is it provides us whether or not it's being blocked, right? So allowed and denied uh, from a blocking perspective. Um, and this is all based on our Envision Cloud Cloud Registry, which provides us information uh, about 50 different attributes and each of the over 20,000, almost 30,000 services in the registry. They can be color coded based on what we'd like for our environment. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how we can delve deeper into seeing the services that are being used within our cloud environment. So we went back to our My Dashboard and we're going to explore some of these unassigned services. And what this allows us to do is we can look at the next piece of this use case, which talks about ensuring that cloud usage adheres to internal and even industry regulations and policies, right? So we have all these cloud services or unassigned cloud services here. We can click on this and take a little bit uh, more information. Um, that's our unassigned services card. And here we can see uh, that there are a number of services that are not assigned to a service group and it's the goal to automatically group these services together um, so that we can make uh, choices and add uh, some governance around what these URLs do and add them to the current existing hardware and software that we would have. So our perimeter security appliances. Um, proxies and firewalls have their own source of uh, security and services, but what we can do from the Envision Cloud perspective is enhance these capabilities by leveraging that cloud registry. Remember we talked about that, over 20,000 services that are uh, registered into Envision Cloud and provide those 50 attributes to be able to get far more granular than we would with typical firewall and uh, proxy. So here we're looking at all these unassigned services. And remember, we are looking at the uh, high-risk cloud storage uh, services. Let's collect unassigned. And right now we have these high-risk cloud storage services. And this has actually already been assigned to a service group. So when we talk about what service groups are, they're our ability to add services that we have, so these cloud services in our environment, to a group to be able to take action. So remember, adding it to the existing hardware. So how do we do that? Um, let's go ahead and look at the actual service groups themselves. And we see these already defined. Now we can look at the high risk cloud storage ability. And the interesting part is let's explain what this does. You know, we could add to this if we wanted to, but right now we have an automatic assignment of a cloud storage for seven, eight, and nine ratings. So high risk score for cloud storage. That's our uh, one of the attributes. And we have 107 services already assigned. And remember, we had those risky services we were looking at before, such as. Um, uh, you know, wiki storage and things along those lines that now that they're applied and if our browser is pointing at the McAfee web gateway as its proxy is going to automatically block. So I have a browser set up um, 
Remember MasterDisk was one of the cloud services that was a risky cloud service that one of our users was um, utilizing to upload files to? Well now what we can do is when we have a proxy set up on these browsers, it says your requested URL has been blocked by the Sky High connector. Um, so we're able to create these service groups together to be able to provide a uh, blocking capability. What if we just want to train our users? We also have something called um, a uh, learning type function. So and if we don't really want them to go to MyFitnessPal, we can create a, um, a policy within the web gateway that allows them to learn um, that this was a breach service, if we remember this correctly, uh, Under Armour with uh, MyFitnessPal was breached and we may not want them to go. So we're able to create this as an ability for them to get um, trained to not going to these. You could continue, but it will actually uh, set this together. So the nice part about this is we're able to take the governance from uh, the Sky High piece um, and add this into the integrations with McAfee Web Gateway and provide this through the functionality of um, the Sky High McAfee integration. Um, we now have all of those cloud registry attributes that we've been using before and utilizing them at our perimeter to be able to um, block users from accessing risky sites based on policy and our risk um, posture. Hopefully this helps you understand how we can use Envision Cloud for uh, Shadow IT and finding services that are running in within our environment. Um, feel free to contact me if you have any other questions. Thank you.